Joshua Twinney, The Safe Towns. One day the Lord told Joshua, when Moses was still alive, I commanded him to tell the Israelites about the safe towns. Now, you tell them that it is time to set up these towns. If a person accidentally kills someone and the victim's relatives say it was a murder, they might try to take revenge. Anyone accused of murder can run to one of the safe towns and be safe from the victim's relatives. The one needing protection will stand at entrance to the town gate and explain to the town leaders what happened. Then the leaders will bring that person in, a, in and provide a place to live in their town. One of the victim's relatives might come to the town looking for revenge. But the town leaders must not simply hand over the person accused of murder. After all, the accused and the victim had been neighbors, not enemies. The citizen of, citizens of that safe town must come together and hold the trial. They may decide that the victim was killed accidentally and that the accused is not guilty of murder. Everyone found not guilty must still live in the safe town until the high priest dies. Then they can go back to their own towns and their town and their homes that they had to leave behind. The Israelites decided that the following three towns west of the Jordan River would be safe towns. Kadesh in Gilear, Galilee in Nap Naphtali's hill country, Sekem in Abraham's hill country, and Kiriath Ar Arba in Judah's hill country. Kiriath Arba is now called Hebron. The Israelites had already decided on following three towns east of the Jordan River. Bezor in the desert flat lands of Reuven, Ramoth in Gilead, which was a town had belonged to God, and Golan in Bashan, which belongs to Manasseh. These safe towns were set up so that if Israelites or even foreigners who lived in Israel accidentally killed someone, they could run to one of these towns. There they would be safe until a trial could be held. Even if one of the victim's relatives came looking for revenge. Joshua 21 Levi's Town while the Israelites were still camped at Silo in the land of Ganaan, the family leaders of the Levite tribe went to speak to the priest Eliezer, Joshua, and the family leaders of the other Israelite tribes. The leaders of Levi said, The Lord told Moses, Then you have to give us towns and provide pastures for our animals. Since the Lord had said this, the leaders of the other Israelite tribes agreed to give some of the towns and pastures from their tribe tribal land of lands to Levi. The leaders asked the Lord to show them in what order the clans of Levi would be given towns and which towns each clan would receive. The Kohath clans were first. The descendants of Aaron, Israel's first priest, 
were given thirteen towns from the tribes of Judah, Simon, and Benjamin. The other members of the Kohath clans received ten towns from the tribes of Abraham, Dan, and West Manasseh, the clans that were descendants of Gershon were given thirteen towns from the tribe of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and East Manasseh. The clans that were descendants of Merari received twelve towns from the tribe of Reuben, Gad, and Zebron. The Lord had told Moses that he would show the Israelite fish towns and pastures to give to the clans of Levi, and he did towns from Judah, Simon, Benjamin. The descendants of Aaron from the Kohath the clans of Levi were priests, and they were chosen to receive town first. They were given certain towns and the pasture land around them. Nine of these towns were from the tribes of Judah, and Simon and four from Benjamin. Hebron, Rimna, Jetir, Estemoa, Harlon, Divia, Eshon, Jita, and Beta, Basis, Semesh were from Judah and Simon. Hebron, located in the country of Judah, was earlier called Arba's town. It had been named after Arba, the ancestor of the Anakim. Hebron's Pasturans were along with the town, but it is, but each of farmlands and villages around it had been given to Galap. Hebron was also one of the safe towns from people who had accidentally killed the summon. Given Geva, the Anatoth, and Almon were from Benjamin. Towns from Abraham, Dan, West Manasseh. The rest of the Karath clan of the Levi tribe received ten towns and the pasture land around them. Four of these towns were from the tribe of Abraham, four from Dan, and two from West Manasseh. Sekem, Gezel, Kivjaim, and Beth Haron were from Abraham. Sekem was located in the hill country, and it was also one of the safe towns for people who had accidentally killed someone. Elteke, Kipeton, Aijaron, and Kasrimmon were from Dan. Takach and Jivlim were from West Manasseh, towns from East Manasseh, Isagar, Asher, Naphtali, the clans of Levi that were descendants of Gerson, received certain towns and the pasture and around them. Two of these towns were from the tribe of East Manasseh, four from Isagar, four from Asher, and three from Naphtali. Golan in Bashan and Bir Shetra were from East Manasseh, Kishion, uh, Babareth, Jarmuth, and An Ganim were from Isagar, Bishar, Abdon, Herkath, and Rehob were from Asher, Kadesh in Galilee. Hamorath Burt and Carton were from Naphtali. Golan in Bashan and Kadesh in Galilee were also safe towns from people who had accidentally killed someone. Towns from Jibron, Luben, Gad. The rest of the Revi clans were descendants of Re Melari and they received twelve towns with the pasture and around them. For towns were from the tribe of Jebron, four from Reuben, and four from God. Jaknim, 
Karta, Rimona, and Nahalal were from Jubron. Bejo, Jajar, Kedemoth, and Mepath were from Reuven. Bejo was located in the desert to flatland east of the Jordan River across from Jericho. Rumoth in Gilead, Mananaim, Manhanaim, Hashabon, and Ajajur were from God. Bejur and Ramoth in Gilead were safe towns for people who had accidentally killed someone. The people of the Levite tribe had a total of 48 towns with is Israel, and they had patched around each one of their towns, Israel settlers in the land. The Lord gave the Israelites the land he had promised their ancestors, and they captured it and settled in it. There still were enemies around is Israel. But the Lord kept his promise to let his people live in peace. And whenever the Israelites did have to go to war, no enemy could defeat them. The Lord always helped Israel win. The Lord promised to do many good things for Israel, and he kept his promise every time. Joshua 22 The two and a half tribes returned home. Joshua held a meeting with the man of the tribe of Reuben God and East Manasseh and he told them, You have obeyed every command of the Lord your God and he had God and of his servant Moses. And you have done everything I have told you to do. It is taken a long time, but you have stayed and helped your relatives. The Lord promised to give peace to your relatives, and that, that he had done. Now it's time for you to go back to your own homes in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan River. Moses taught you to love the Lord your God to be faithful to him and to worship and obey him with your whole heart and with all your strength. So be very careful to do everything Moses commanded. You will become rich from what you've taken from your enemies, your big herd of cattle. Lots of silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and plenty of clothes. Take everything home with you and share with the people of your tribe. I pray that God will be kind to you. You are now free to go home. The tribes of Reuben and God started back to Gilead, uh, their own land. Uh, Moses had given the land of Bashan to, to the East Manasseh tribe. So they started back along with Reuben and God. God had told Moses that these two and a half tribes should conquer Gil Gilad and Bashan, and they had done so. Joshua had given land west of the Jordan River to the other half of the Manasseh tribe. So they stayed at Shiloh in the land of Ganaan with the rest of the Israelites. The tribe of Reuben got an east Manasseh reached the western side of the Jordan Valley, River Valley and built a huge altar there beside the river. When the rest of Israel heard what these tribes had done, the Israelite men made a sealer to get ready to attack the two and a half tribes. But first they sent a priest, uh, Pinehas, the son of 
Elijah to talk with the two and a half tribes, each of the ten tribes at Silo sent the leader of one of each families along with Pinehas. Pinehas and these leaders went to Gil Gilad and married the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh. They said, all of the road people have gathered together and have sent us to find out why you are unfaithful to our God. You have turned your back on the Lord by building that altar. Why are you revealing against Him? Wasn't our people's sin at pure terrible enough for you? The Lord punished us by sending a horrible sickness that killed many of us, and we still suffer because of the sin. Now you are turning your backs on the Lord again. If we don't stop rebelling against the Lord at once, He will be angry with the whole nation. If we don't think your land is a fit place to serve God, then, more, then move across the Jordan and live with us in the Lord's own land where His sacred tent is located. But don't rebel against the Lord our God or against us by building another altar beside the Lord's own altar. Don't you remember what happened when a Chan was unfaithful and took some of the things that belonged to God? This made God angry with the entire nation. A Chan died because he sinned, but he also caused the death of many others. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh answered, The Lord is greatest God. We ask him to be our witness, because he knows whether or not we were rebellious or unfa unfaithful when we built that altar. If we were unfaithful, then we pray that God own to rescue us today. Let us tell you why we built that altar, and we ask the Lord to punish us if we are lying. We didn't build it so we could turn our back on the Lord. We didn't even build it so we could offer animal or grain sacrifices to please the Lord or ask His blessing. We built that altar because we were worried. Someday your descendants might tell our descendants the Lord made the Jordan River the boundary between us, Israel, and you people of Reuben and God. The Lord is Israel's God, but you are not part of Israel, so you can't take part in worshiping the Lord. Your descendants might say that by say that and try to make our descendants stop worshiping and obeying the Lord. That's why we decided to build the altar. It isn't for offering sacrifices, not even sacrifice to please the Lord. To build another altar for offering sacrifices would be the same as turning our backs on the Lord and rebelling against Him. We could never do that. No, we built the altar to remind us and you and the generations to come that we be, will worship the Lord. And so we will keep bringing our sacrifices to the Lord altar there in front of His sac sacred tent. Now, your descendants will never be able to to say to our descendants, you can worship the Lord. But if they do say this, our descendants can answer back, 
Look at this altar our ancestors built. It's like the Lord altar. It isn't for offering sacrifices. It's here to remind us and you that we belong to the Lord just as much as you do. Venus and the clan leaders were pleased when they heard the tribes of Reuben, God and East Manasseh explain why they had built the altar. Then Venus told them, Today we know that the Lord is helping us. We have not been unfaithful to him and this means that the Lord will not be angry with us. Phineas and the clan leaders left Gilad and went back to Canaan to tell the Israelites about their meeting with the Reuben and God tribes. The Israelites were happy and praised God. There was no more talk about going to war and whipping out the tribes of Reuben and God. The people of Reuben and God named the altar a reminder to us all that the Lord is our God. Joshua 23 Joshua's farewell speech The Lord let Israel live in peace with its neighbors for a long time. And Joshua lived to a ripe old age. One day he called a meeting of the leader of the tribe of Israel, including the old men, the judges, and the officers. Then he told them, I am not very old. I have I've seen how the Lord your God fought for you and helped you defeat the nation who lived in this land. There are still some nations left, but the Lord has promised you their land. So when you attack them, he'll make them run away. I have already divided their land among your tribes, so I did with the land of the nations. I defeated, I defeated between the Jordan River and Med Mediterranean. Mediterranean Sea. Be sure that you carefully obey everything written in the book of the law of Moses and do exactly what it says. Don't have anything to do with the nations that live around you. Don't worship their gods or pray to their idols or make promises in the name of their gods. Be as faithful to the Lord as you have always been. When you attacked powerful nations, the Lord made them run away, and no one has ever been able to stand up to you. Any, any one of you can defeat a thousand enemy soldiers because the Lord God fights for you just as he promised. Be sure to always love the Lord your God. Don't ever turn your backs on Him by marrying people from the nations that are left in the land. Don't even make sh friends with them. I tell you that if you are friendly with those nations, the Lord won't chase them away when you attack. Instead, they will be like a trap for your feet, a whip on your back, and thrown in your eyes. And finally, none of you will be left in this good land that the Lord has given you. I will soon die, as everyone must. But deep in your heart, you, you, know, you know that the Lord has kept every promise He ever made to you. Not one of them has been broken. Oh, yes, when the Lord makes a promise, He does what He has promised. But when He makes a treat, 
he will also do what he has threatened. The Lord is our God. He gave us his this wonderful land and made an agreement with us that he would worship only him. For if we worship other gods, it will make the Lord furious. He will start getting rid of you and soon not one of you will be left in this good land that he has given you. Joshua 24 We will worship and obey the Lord. Joshua called the tribes of Israel together for a meeting at Sechem. He asked the leaders, including the old men, the judges, and the officers to come up and stand near the sacred tent. Then Joshua told everyone to listen to this message from the God, the Lord the God of Israel. Long ago, our ancestors lived on the other side of the U Euphrates River, and they worshipped the other gods. This continued until the time of your ancestor Terah and his two sons. Abraham and Nahor, but I brought Abraham across the Euphrates River and led him through the land of Canaan. I blessed him by giving him Isaac, the first in a line of many descendants. Then I gave Isaac two sons, Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Mount Seir, Seir. But your ancestor Jacob and his children went to live in Egypt. Later I sent Moses and his brother Aaron to help your people, and I, and I made all those horrible things happen to the Egyptians. I brought your ancestor out of Egypt, but the Egyptians got in their chariots and other and on their horses and chased your ancestors catching up with them at the Red Sea. Your people cried to me for help, so I put a dark coat between them and the Egyptians. Then I opened up the sea and ran your people to crown, walk around on dry ground. But when the Egyptian tried to follow, I commanded the sea to shallow them, swallow them, and they drowned while they watched. I lived in the desert for a long time. Then I brought you into the land east of the Jordan River. The Amorites were living there and they fought you. But with my help, you defeated them, wiped them out, and took their land. King Balak decided that his nation Moab would go to war against you, so he asked Balaam to come and put a curse on you. But I wouldn't listen to Balaam, and I rescue you by making him bless you instead of curse you. He crossed the Jordan River and came to Jericho. The rulers of Jericho fought you, and so did the Amorites and Perizzites, the Gananites and Hittites, the Gil Gergashitites and Hibat and Jebusites. I have you defeated them all. Your enemies ran from you, but not but not because you had swords and bows and arrows. I made your enemies panic and run away, as I had done with the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River. 
You didn't have to work for this land. I gave it to you. Now you live in towns. You didn't build, and you eat grapes and olive from vineyards and trees you didn't plant. Then Joshua told the people, Worship the Lord, obey Him, and always be faithful. Get rid of the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived on the other side of the Euphrates River and in Egypt. But if you don't want to worship the Lord, then choose here and now. Will you worship the same idols your ancestors did? Or since you are living on land that once belonged to the Amorites, maybe, you will worship their gods. I own My family and I are going to worship and obey the Lord. The people answered, We could never worship other gods or stop worshiping the, the Lord. The Lord is our God. We were slaves in Egypt as our ancestor had did had, had been but we saw the Lord work miracles to set our people free and to bring us out of Egypt even though other nations were all around us the Lord protected us wherever we went and when we fought the Amorites and the other nations that lived in this land the Lord made them run away yes we will worship and obey the Lord because the Lord is our God Joshua said the Lord is fearsome he is the one true God and I don't think you are able to worship and obey him in the way he demands you will have to be completely faithful and if you sin or level, he won't let you get away with it. If you turn your backs on the Lord and worship the gods of other nations, the Lord will turn against you. He will make a troubled things happen to you and wipe you out, even though he had been good to you before. But the people shouted, We won't worship any other gods. We will worship and obey only the Lord. Joshua said, You have heard ourselves say that you will worship and obey the Lord. Isn't that true? Yes, it's true. They answered. Joshua said, but you still have some idols like those the other nations worship. Get rid of your idols. You must decide one and for all that you really want to obey the Lord God of Israel. The people said, The Lord is our God, and we will worship and obey only Him. Joshua helped Israel make an agreement with the Lord that day as a camp. Joshua made the laws for Israel and wrote them down in the book of law of God. Then he set up a large stone under an oak tree at the place of worship in Sechem and told the people, Look at this stone. It has heard everything that the Lord has said to us our God can call this stone as a witness if we ever reject him Joshua sent everyone back to their homes Joshua, Joseph and Elijah are buried now Long afterwards, the Lord's servant Joshua died at the age of 110. The Israelites buried him in his own land at Timnath Serah. 
north of Mount Gashi, in the hill country of Abraham. As long as Joshua lived, Israel worshipped and obeyed the Lord. There were other readers old enough to remember everything that the Lord had done for Israel. And for as long as these men lived, Israel continued to worship and obey the Lord. When the people of Israel left Egypt, they brought the bones of Joseph along with them. They took the bones to the town of Sechem and buried them in the field that Jacob had brought for 100 pieces of silver for Hamor and founder of Sechem. The town and the field was became part of the land belonging to the descendant of Joseph. When Eliezer the priest died, he was buried in the hill country of Abraham on hill that belongs to his son Pinus.